In our last lesson, we uh, completed uh, this HTML and this is what we got as a result. In this lesson, we'll be styling um, this uh, the top footer uh, of our document, uh, getting the styles to look just right. Um, in our project A, create a new folder and call that folder CSS. Okay, so we'll right click on CSS and create a new file and we'll go to file and save and we'll save this as style.css. Okay, so I'll drag this to the left. So the next thing we need to link these two files up within our index. Okay, we'll, we'll type link and tab and we could have uh, this created for us. So we need to go into href and we need to say CSS slash style CSS okay so we're saying basically go into the CSS folder and link up to style.css so now everything is linked up together if we just go into our browser and reset nothing happens because the only thing we've done is just link those two documents together so we need to start styling things we can see here that our document is made up of just one font family it's called Baskerville so we need to um, style that so we're basically saying go into the body element and style every element within the body and give it a font family of Baskerville. Okay, so in our style, we say font family uh, Baskerville, and we can put some other fonts to default to, like Times and Serif. So we're saying if you don't have Baskerville, uh, default to Times. If you don't have Times, default to Serif. So that's it, really. So if we come back here and we reset. You will notice that the font has changed and it's using Baskerville and now it looks like this okay so we need to now take care of the spacing between our P elements and um, the space in there so if we come here within footer we have P so we could target that first let's say footer we say draw a border around footer that's one pixel red and dotted this would allow us to sort of see the space occupied by the footer within our browser. If we refresh, we can see that we have two um, footer being used in this document, but we want to target just the top one. So here we have our CSS documentation. Uh, there's a first child selector that we could use to find the first footer. So we want to say, uh, find the first child of body okay the first child of body is the footer so to do that we could say body uh, find the first child this is how it's written so this will target the first child of body for us okay so if we reset we can see only the top footer has been highlighted for us okay so that's exactly what we want so now we want to deal with these spaces between um, between our footer and our header okay so we want to make it more realistic so we could say, okay, now that we have the first child, we could say, apply a margin bottom, basically push everything below the first child down by 60 pixels, okay? So if we come back in here and we reset, we could see that the space there is now six pixels, but we have these spaces here that we need to take care of. So that basically is within footer, we have our P elements, okay? So we want to take up the spaces there. So to target the P, we could say in footer, find the first children that are P elements. Okay, so this is how it's written. And we could say set their margin top and their margin bottom to zero pixels. So this will close up those spaces for us. If we reset, we can see those, those spaces have been closed for us. But if you notice here, we have a little bit of space, so we don't want them completely closed up, okay? So if we go back into our style, we could change the margin bottom and we could set it to something like uh, six pixels. If we go back and we refresh or reset, we could see that we have those spaces there. But the last one has six pixels, we don't want that. So we want the last one not to have any spaces. So to target the last child, we say in footer, find all the P children and get me the last child. So the last P, okay? And we could style that and we could say to it, uh, set the margin uh, bottom for that last child to be zero pixels. So this is basically targeting the last child and setting to zero pixels 
And if we go back into our browser and reset, we can see everything is fixed. Okay, so our first footer has been styled and looks exactly as we want it. Uh, we could go ahead and, and remove this. I use this for visual purposes. So we could delete it now. And if we go back and we reset, we can see it's gone and everything is looking much better. Okay, so in the next lesson, we'll be styling this, changing the color and having this, the font size uh, look as it does here. And we've, uh, we've seen a whole bunch of selectors for CSS. We've, we've dealt with the first child, uh, CSS and last child. And there's a, a few CSS we've written here, which you can revise and um, you know try typing it um, by yourself again. Um, so I think we can end this lesson um, lesson here. We've seen how we can how children um, element children work and how to select element children. Um, in the next lesson, we'll carry on from where we've stopped and we'll style some more elements within our document. And I look forward to seeing you there.